Mm. Hey, my voice is a little weird because I have a sore throat and doctor told me to have a voice rest so I am not stressing my voice. I fully depend on this microphone and if you have issues in hearing me, please let me know. Yes or no? Thank you. So my topic is about MongoDB. <coughs> so MongoDB is considered as one of the newest, not newest, I can say it as one of the youngest database that is available in the software industry. The term Mongo was taken from the word homogeneous, which means to represent huge, big, large, etc. So today we will have a detailed discussion on the MongoDB and uh, MongoDB falls under the classification of NoSQL database. So it is better to understand the difference between the conversion relation database that we are all familiar with uh, versus the NoSQL databases. And also we will cover the advantages, disadvantages of MongoDB, the features of the MongoDB and where we can use the MongoDB. So what is MongoDB? I know most of us have seen on the net regarding MongoDB. So the simplest answer I can say is it is scalable, open source, high performance, document oriented database. This is not my saying, it was the manufacturer saying. So we will see uh, how does this scalable refers to and what are the factors that made this database high performance one and uh, we will see what is a document oriented database. So talking about some its creation and manufacture, it was created by a company called Tengen in 2007 and now it was renamed to um, <coughs> No Going Corporation and they created in 2010 and the first production ready version was released on 2010 and the stable version 2.4 was released on 2013. And I just list out some of the major clients who were using MongoDB a couple of years uh, back. Uh, this were the major clients include the MTV, SourceForge, etc. Um, MongoDB is available for different platforms such as Windows, Linux, OX10, Solaris, etc. And also it has a great support over different languages like Java, JavaScript, Python. I think most of the major and famous languages are covered by MongoDB. So it is also available in uh, under the license, general public license, which is for free and also available under commercial license from the manufacturer. <coughs> so let us start with the classification section. MongoDB falls under the uh, classification document and oriented database, which again falls under the broader classification called NoSQL databases. Uh, if you uh, zoom out further, uh, most of the database at present we are using falls under uh, one of these major groups. Of course, there are other major groups uh, classified, but these are the uh, famous groups um, which normally we use to take classifications. Uh, one is the relational database management system, or are familiar with that. The second classification is OLAP which means online analyzing and processing. And uh, Oracle Express uh, is an example for our lab. And the third category is NoSQL database. MongoDB falls under this classification, so we will concentrate on NoSQL databases. So let us see some history back behind the creation of NoSQL database. In the early 70s, we used to have flat file systems. And data was used to store in flat file systems. The problem here was, um, there is no standard implementation way for writing the data into the file system and retrieving it back. Um, <coughs> so um, many companies own their own implementation of flat file systems. Uh, at that time, a computer scientist named Code introduced the idea of relational theory. Uh, based on that, several relational databases were created, and this relational database was an answer to most of the issues created by flat file systems. <coughs> So we got a standard way of writing the data into the database and a standard way of coding it back. And programmers need not worry about it. They, they, just want, they just need to query. And how to process the query, that up to the database. It was database ethic. So everything was perfect, everything was good, until uh, the data became very large. Unfortunately, unfortunately, relational database is not capable of handling big data. Uh, due to by virtue of its design, it is 
not horizontally scalable. Of course, it is vertically scalable, but it is not horizontally scalable. The main idea behind the creation of NoSQL database was the horizontal scalability. I think this feature will be familiar because uh, Nigel has shown the same thing over here. I will explain what is horizontal scalability in layman's word. If you want to uh, double the performance of the double the performance, you just need to double the number of computers. <coughs> uh, the performance is linearly proportional to the the number of computers. That is horizontal scalability, and thus we have no SQL database. Uh, it provides a mechanism for storage of the table data other than in a tabular relation, which is used in relational databases. It is commonly used in big data and real-time web applications. So, let us see what are the missing things, or let us see the comparison between NoSQL and relational database in practice. In NoSQL database, there is no support for no joins. If you want to perform this kind of uh, functionality, we have to write uh, multiple queries and join the data manually within our code. It's quite good. <coughs> And the second thing is, it doesn't support complex transactions. Means, if I can't say that uh, first insert these two rows, then update that, and uh, if the uh, and finally commit, if this is not the condition, roll back. Uh, so rolling back of multiple transactions mean within in a NoSQL is not supported. And the third one is, it has no support for constraint. The constraints are implemented at the application level, not in the database level. So we have seen the missing part of the NoSQL database. Obviously, they are missing in order to provide extra pages. Otherwise, what is the benefit of using NoSQL database, right? So uh, we will see one by one. It has query language. Of course, it is not a natural feature. But I just want to give you a clarification that NoSQL doesn't mean that we cannot query from the database. We can query from the database, and we have query like language. In our case, MongoDB. We have uh, document query language. We will see some sample document query languages in the coming slides. Of course, it, is, it has a faster performance and corresponding scalability. Let us, <coughs> as a, let us see some summary on this. If you look at this picture, you can see relational databases are more functional compared to NoSQL data database. At the same time, the performance of the NoSQL database is more compared to the relational databases. <coughs> now let us move to the classification of NoSQL database. Uh, mainly NoSQL databases <coughs> are classified based on column, document, key value pair, graph, multi-model. And some examples based on that also we are, I have listed out. And our MongoDB is a documented oriented database. <coughs> so uh, these are some of the benefits and strengths of MongoDB. As it uh, give uh, all related data are laying on the single document, the faster query operation can be achieved, and it is highly scalable, horizontally scalable, and it is easy to manage, and it supports dynamic schema. Let us compare a relational database and a <coughs> MongoDB. Table in a relational database will have records and entity represented by the table. Each record is represented as an instance of a table. <coughs> For example, if we take an example of an employee, if employee is an uh, instance and uh, say um, Sai Krishnan is an entity <coughs> and another entity is John. Uh, then that uh, instance contains two records, one for Sai Krishnan and one for John. In the same way, the table is represented as collection in MongoDB. Uh, if you take the same example that the, like I explained above, uh, below, above um, collection we have employee collection and there will be one document for Sai Krishna and one document for John. This is a representation of uh, a relational table. Um, the table name is employee. Here you can see. Uh, multiple records in a table employee and we can also see uh, multiple fields for each <coughs> record and here <coughs> now we will compare the same example same scenario in MongoDB as I said MongoDB is a collection of documents here we can see 
three type of three documents in that. One document for Sai, one document for Valentino, and one document for John. It is represented in JSON-like format, which is um, um, sorry, it is in BSON format, which is similar to JSON. Um, BSON format. <coughs> It stands for Binary Interchange and Structure Object Notation. <coughs> it has collection, and I said earlier, it is collection is equal to a table in relational database. And uh, each collection contains many documents. <coughs> if we take, uh, if we zoom in further, we can see different fields within each document. It is in the format of, like key value pairs. Here, first name is the key, value is Sai, the last name is the key, uh, value is Krishna, and likewise. And like in relational database, primary key is equivalent uh, to our underscore object, underscore ID. Uh, it is actually formed on a uh, combination of uh, a timestamp and a client transaction ID plus client process ID plus 3 bit incremental counter. So, uh, I underscore ID is mandatory in MongoDB. And unlike in relation database, all the data uh, all the data going to a table does not need to have same number of fields. If you look at the first document, it has four fields. The second document contains three fields. And third contains uh, five fields. So it shows the flexibility nature of the MongoDB. Not in the only it is up to the uh, document oriented database. It also support array structure. Like if you look at the uh, fourth field project, it contains an array like project one and project two. Sai is uh, linked to project one and project two, and the below document contains row C uh, <coughs> is linked to project one. Here it shows the um, many to one mapping and one to many mapping that can be easily achieved in MongoDB. It also supports embedded data model like representation as I shown on my screen. Uh, Atmosphere itself has uh, multiple combinations of field uh, array structures like this. As I said earlier, uh, these are some uh, samples of document oriented query language. It is simple to write. The first uh, one needs to retrieve a set of records uh, whose ID is like 1, 2, 3. And the second one is like to retrieve, fetch the, all the data whose name starts with Sai likewise. It is easy to write and easy to understand. Now let us see some of the features of MongoDB. Uh, it, uh, it supports regular expressions, range queries, and uh, search by for everything, like in SQL <coughs> database. It has indexing. I don't think I don't need to explain more than that. It has, and the another built-in feature is that it has replication. <coughs> uh, it supports master scale replication. Uh, same copies data from the master and can be used for read or write backups. <coughs> this is also a built-in feature of uh, MongoDB. This case, uh, we don't have to worry about the hardware failure because it, the data is duplicated and makes the system run, keep up and running. It <coughs> Load balancing is also a built-in feature. It is easy to configure. And scalability, I just mentioned in the previous slide. Cap collections. It, it's, kind, uh, it's a kind of collection which can store data and retrieve in the same way it has inserted. So uh, we can consider this like a circular cube. That's one of the features of uh, MongoDB. And one of the biggest features of MongoDB is that it can store files. If we can, if we can, if we want to store big files like videos, audios, etc., we can use uh, grid This is one of the features of the MongoDB. <coughs> Attribution, map produce can be achieved through aggregation. With, uh, it is similar to the SQL group by clause. Uh, hope you all know about MapReduce. Uh, MapReduce is nothing. Uh, it is uh, breaking up of uh, big computation into smaller pieces, and after computation, the result will be aggregated together. So it is a built-in feature in um, MongoDB. 
and it supports server side java execution hope i don't will be happy with that <laughs> because he is very much interested in this kind of things uh, and it has a special support for locations uh, it has understands longitude and latitude natively those who are using uh, the location based applications it is there for them it will be a blessing and another feature is that in relational database we need to convert recorded objects, but in MongoDB we don't need. So it saves the programming time and the effort for the programmer. Let us see some disadvantages on this. As I said earlier, it has no support for joins and memory usage. It uses the memory map files, so it is uh, sometimes uh, it may affect the performance. I'm not sure about that. Uh, uh, all the documents always say that if you use the 32-bit uh, version of MongoDB as it is using memory map, map files, uh, the storage area will, will be limited to 2 GB. So it will, won't give us the uh, maximum performance what we expect from a MongoDB. If you use 64-bit uh, version of MongoDB, uh, uh, <coughs> virtually there is no limitation for the storage size, so we can get good performance. So at least for the production de deployment, we, we have to use 64-bit version of MongoDB. And it has concurrency issues. These are the some of the common applications where we can consider MongoDB. In big data, content management, delivery, mobile and social infrastructure, data hub, GR data, application configuration, like this. As I said earlier, MongoDB is relatively lame compared to our conventional uh, SQL or relational database. Uh, over the years, relational database have got much uh, support and we will get much documentation uh, from the internet. But uh, the MongoDB, it's, uh, we have been around 2009 or something, so we will get we will not get much support for MongoDB. But this does not mean that MongoDB does not have uh, potential. Uh, it has been created for a specific scenario. The programmer or the developer have to uh, have to aware of in which scenario we have to, we can use MongoDB. And I'm concluding. I think I have to wind up the session. 